Number 20, letter A. Common transparent tape becomes charged when pulled from a dispenser. If one piece is placed above another, the repulsive force can be great enough to support the top piece's weight. Assuming equal point charges, only an approximation, calculate the magnitude of the charge. If electrostatic force is great enough to support the weight of a 10 milligram piece of tape held one centimeter above another. All right. So first, there's a lot of stuff given, but we need a picture. All right, so here's the two pieces of tape, and they're going to be, you know, this this piece of tape is obviously, you know, it's going to be have some length to it, but they are saying assume that it acts as a single point charge. Okay, fair enough. Um, they tell us the distance between these two charges, right? They told that uh, that it's going to be one centimeter. So let's draw that in. Okay, so this distance here is going to be one centimeter. One centimeter. We know we need that in meters, so why don't we just do the conversion? 0.01 meters. Okay. And it also tells us that the weight, they also, they also give us the weight of, uh, actually, yeah, so, no, excuse me, they give us the mass, uh, right? They're telling us that it's supporting the weight, but they give us the mass, which is good. So they tell us the mass of this piece of tape. They said that the mass of that piece of tape is going to be equal to 10.0 uh, milligrams. Let's just convert that right to grams, right? So that, uh, excuse me kilograms actually right so that's going to be all we got to do is simply just take that and basically multiply it by 10 to the minus uh, 6 so 10 to the minus 6 that'll be 1 times 10 to the minus 5 all right 1 times 10 to the minus 5 you can do that conversion out if you need all right but that that should be the uh, value so now what I need to think about they're telling us that the weight is being supported right that it isn't moving it's literally this thing is literally floating so if it's floating and it's not moving what do you know about the forces that are acting on that point well they're constant right so why don't i draw a little free body diagram that details the forces that are acting on that charge okay so here's my axis i'm going to put in the little dot there that represents the q1 okay q1 has a particular weight right they told that to us they said that the weight, uh, excuse me, they, they told us the mass. They said that the mass is uh, 10 milligrams, aka 1 times 10 to the 5 kilograms, but we know we can find the weight of that, right? The weight of this thing is simply going to be 1 times 10 to the minus 5 multiplied by 9.8, okay? Why don't we just get it out of the way? So let's do that. All right, so hold on one second. All right, just turning on the calculator here. One second, sorry. Come on, calculator. Okay, so we got that. All right, great. So I was just clearing some stuff. Okay, so let's take that multiply by 9.8, and that's going to be 9.8 times 10. Yeah, I don't, why? why? I'm sorry, getting, I was distracted a little bit. My apologies. 9.8 times 10 to the minus 5, and that's going to be in terms of now newtons. Okay, that's the weight of the object. Now, if this object is not moving and it's floating, if I leave my picture like this, we know that's not balanced. This thing would accelerate down. But if it's not moving, we know there's an equal but opposite force, right? And where's that pointing? Well, that's pointing up now. So I'm going to draw that in red, okay? Now, my question to you is this. What is providing this force? It's the electrostatic force, right? Think about this. Both of these things are charged the same way, okay? Okay. This Q1, I don't care if it's positive or negative, call it positive. But that means that this Q2 is also positive. Because they told us that it's going to be, there's a repulsive force between them. So they have to be the same charge. Now, if they're the same charge, and they're two charges separated by a certain distance, as we've done in the past 10 problems now, right? There is then a force that is produced on the black charge by the red charge. All right, check out number 10, and I think it was number 16. Whichever one was long, 16, 17, 15, I don't remember now. But whichever one was really long, I went in through a lot of detail on that. All right, so we know that there's going to be an electrostatic force, and we know that the force on the red charge is pointing up because it's a repulsive force between the black and the red, right? So it's pointing up. Again, check out that number 16, went in a lot of detail there. All right, so... I basically now realize that the electrostatic force here without, you know, I, I, so in terms of formulas, right, the sum of the forces, since this thing is not, some of the forces is always equal to MA, right? Some of the forces, there's only Y forces here, so it's really equal to MAY. 
But now there's no acceleration in the problem. So if acceleration is zero, then that means the sum of the forces in the y direction have to equal zero, right? I have my electrostatic force F sub E minus then the weight. Those are the two forces. That should equal zero. And we come to the conclusion that we didn't even need to do all that math, but we know that the electrostatic force will equal the weight, right? So that's the first piece. Now, why don't we expand on the electrostatic force? You know that the formula here is going to be the electrostatic constant multiplied by the charge of Q1 times Q2, all divided by then the distance between them squared. And that's going to now equal the weight. Remember the weight, we found it already, right? That's going to be 9.8. I'm just going to leave it as W though for now. And here's the thing. We want to solve for the charge, right? That's what it's asking. What's the charge on this, on these things, right? Whether it's positive or negative, it doesn't matter. But, you know, we're finding the magnitude of the charge. So, I mean, they both got to be the same, though, because otherwise then they'd be attracting. And then obviously, how in the world would that be floating? Um, so the, the key insight here is you might look at this and you might say, well, how am I going to do that? I got two unknowns. Well, you don't really. You don't. Right? Assuming equal point charges. That means Q1 is equal to Q2. And that means I can just call this stuff Q, right? Or substitute out Q1, Q2 for Q1, like literally plug in Q1 there, right? It doesn't matter. They're all the same. So what I can basically do is do this, K times Q times Q, and that would simply be Q squared now, right? Oh my goodness, and there it is, right? That's the whole thing. This is Q squared divided by r squared, divided by r squared is equal to w. Now solve this thing for q, right? So it's going to be now q squared. I bring the r squared on up over to the right, so it's r squared times the weight, all divided by k, and then I gotta take the square root, right? Of this side, and then also of this side. When I take the square root of the left, the square goes by by, and I'm left with now this is my formula, and this is it. Now remember, when you, I, technically then this is under the absolute value and then, you know, when we got to get rid of the absolute value, we got to like put a plus minus sign in front of that. So, but that's what we mean. It's either going to be positive or negative. It doesn't really matter. It's going to be one of the two. They're both going to be positive or they're both going to be negative, but let's just find the magnitude. So this is good enough. All right. So here, let's plug everything in. So the distance between them was one centimeter, AKA 0 0.01 meters. So 0 0.01 squared times the weight. And the weight they told us was 9.8 times 10 to the minus 5. We calculated that already. And then divided by K, which is 8.99 times 10 to the ninth. And let's do it. So the charge will be square root of 0.01 squared multiplied by 9.8 times 10 to the minus 5 divided by then 8.99 times 10 to the ninth. 1.04. So 1.04 times 10 raised to the negative ninth. Coulombs, and you can plug that would be one time 1.04 nano coulombs, right? You can do your conversions if you need. So, guys, thank you very much for tuning in. I do hope this helped. Please remember to help us out and subscribe, and we look forward to helping you with more problems. Take care.